Welcome to your first bassoon lesson. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to get set up on the bassoon with all of the basics that you need as if I were teaching you one on one in a private lesson right now. If this is our first time meeting, my name is Dr. Natalie Law and I'm a professional bassoonist and bassoon teacher and I love to start students on the bassoon and help you improve your skills to play. If you're just learning to play the bassoon, I recommend that you get subscribed to my channel because I have a lot of other videos on tips and tricks and tutorials on how to play the bassoon and improve your skills. In this video, I'm going to be pulling from different video clips of other videos that I filmed and put them all into one place because I've talked about a lot of the fundamentals of bassoon playing on this channel, but I haven't put them all into one first lesson video. So everything that you need to, that you would learn in your first lesson will all be here in one place. And at the end of this video, I have a special gift to you for learning to play bassoon and for getting through your first lesson. So stick around to the end of the video to learn what I have to offer you. So the very first thing that we need to talk about in our lesson is your equipment. Now you may already have a bassoon and even a bassoon reed and feel like you're ready to go but let's make sure that you have everything that you need and that it's working properly. Because the number one thing that will make or break your experience as a bassoonist is your equipment. If you have something that's missing or something that's not functioning properly, it will make your life much more difficult when you're trying to learn the bassoon. So the number one thing you need is a functioning bassoon. And that may seem like a given, but there are a lot of bassoons out there, especially if you're renting a bassoon or borrowing a bassoon that need a lot of maintenance, that they go for years and years and years of sitting and or being played and they don't go to the repair shop to get maintenance. They don't get their pads replaced or things put back into adjustment to make them work properly. And then ultimately the bassoon becomes more difficult to play. So make sure that whether you're renting a bassoon or maybe you've purchased a bassoon or what a, whatever you've done to get an instrument, make sure that that bassoon has been to a reputable repair shop within the last year or two, because that's about how often the bassoon needs some adjustments made to it. If you're not sure, take it in any ways and have them look at it and just make sure it's all working properly. Make sure that in your bassoon case, you do have a vocal. This is a vocal. It's like vocal, but with a B. So a vocal um, is really important. Obviously we need it to play the bassoon, but sometimes if you're, especially if you're renting a bassoon, sometimes they go missing from the bassoon case and you don't have one. So make sure that this is in your case, along with all the other parts to the bassoon. You should have some sort of seat strap in your bassoon case. My seat strap looks like this and has a hook on it that hooks into the bottom of the bassoon. You may have a seat strap that actually has a cup that, that covers the bottom of the bassoon and that's how it's held up. Um, but you need some sort of seat strap to play the bassoon. Now the bassoon can be played standing up. It can be played with a harness or a neck strap, but usually you don't start standing and playing the bassoon until you're a little bit more advanced of a player. To start, you wanna make sure that you're sitting and playing the bassoon and that you're using a seat strap. The purpose of the seat strap is to hold the bassoon up. So you sit on the seat strap across the chair and when the bassoon is hooked into the cup or the strap, the weight of you sitting on the seat strap is what's holding the weight of the bassoon up. And then when you're actually holding the bassoon, you're only just sort of balancing it and it's mostly being held up by the seat strap. So it's really important that you have a seat strap that is working well. And I will link down to a seat strap in the description below if you need to purchase one. So the next item on the list is a swab. This is a silk swab and make sure that when you are buying a swab that it is a bassoon swab. It's not a saxophone swab or clarinet swab. It's a bassoon swab and make sure that it is silk, this material and not cotton because cotton swabs will get stuck inside the bassoon. They don't go through the, the joints as easily. So a silk swab is super important. And if you need to buy one, I'll link down to one below that I would purchase. Another thing that you need is a, a water cup to soak your reeds in. You could have any type of water container. It could just be a regular cup with water in it that you just dump out and refill each time. It could be like a prescription pill bottle that you've cleaned out or it could be like a film canister 
or really anything, or you can actually buy a reed soaking cup. My favorite type of reed soaker is this little container right here with a screw on top. And I love it because it's the perfect size for a bassoon reed and it does not leak. Um, these are like Nalgene bottles. Um, they usually come in like packs of 10 or 12. One note I should I will say right now is that you need to refill your water every single day that you play. So your water needs to be constantly refreshed and then every once in a while, maybe once every couple weeks or so, you probably want to actually clean out your water cup put it in the dishwasher or clean it out by hand um, just to make sure that it's staying clean and that the water in there is clean. When you're soaking your reed, you need to soak the entire reed in water, the thread and everything. That's a little different than some other instruments. Oboists don't soak their reed completely in water. Um, I know not all single reed players do that, but for bassoon, you need to soak the entire reed, the thread and everything in completely in water. So whatever water cup you have, make sure that the water is high enough that it will cover the entire reed. And finally, one of the most important parts to playing the bassoon is having good bassoon reeds. When it comes to reeds, you should always have two to three reeds ready to go at any given time that you could play on because reeds are made of wood, they are prone to cracking and wearing out, and so you you wanna make sure that you always have a backup or two ready to go at any time. You, you don't wanna be limping along on one reed because when that reed cracks or it gets stepped on or something happens to it and you don't have a backup, that's not a good place to be in. So always have two to three reeds ready to go at any given time. I also recommend that as you're playing on reeds, that you rotate through reeds. So play one reed one day, play another reed the next day, play another reed the next day. And when you rotate through reeds like that, that's a good way to take care of them and it's a good way for them to last a lot longer because reeds are expensive. As, as with everything with bassoon, unfortunately, reeds are expensive and you wanna make them last a long time. And if you're rotating two or three reeds rather than just playing the same reed every single day, you won't have to buy reeds as frequently. Bassoon reeds unfortunately do not last forever unless you're buying uh, possibly plastic reeds, which I do not recommend that you buy plastic reeds to start. Most cheaper plastic reeds are not okay to play on. I'm telling you right now, um, they it, it's not at all like playing on real reeds. They often don't sound good, these, pla these cheaper kinds. Um, there are much more expensive uh, plastic reeds out there. They're, um, there's a brand that makes them called Legere, and those reeds are very expensive. I'm not sure what the price is these days, but it's well over $100 a reed. As a beginner in our first lesson, do not invest in one of those reeds until you know a little bit more about what you're doing with the bassoon. So get, get wooden reeds and make sure that you're buying reeds that are made by a professional bassoonist. There are a lot of really bad reeds out there. And a lot of times if you just walk into like a music store and they have reeds displayed, those reeds a lot of times, unless you know that they're being made by a local bassoonist maybe, those reeds are often very not good quality. They don't sound good. They're not easy to play. They often have sort of structural issues with them that unless you're actively working with a teacher who can adjust them, you won't be able to fix or overcome. So if you can, buy reeds from a professional bassoonist. I have reeds on my website. You can purchase them down below um, that I make handmade. Or there's a lot of other places online as well that, that sell very high quality reeds made by professional bassoonists. So make sure you're buying good reeds or your life will be very difficult. When you're putting a bassoon together, you want to make sure that it's on a flat surface such as the floor or a table or a chair or something like that. The other thing you want to remember is that you want to try and hold the instrument from places where you're not going to be crunching any keys or causing any damage to the instrument. So we're going to start with this joint right here. This is the boot joint, okay? And you'll notice that there are two holes in the boot joint. There is the larger hole and smaller hole. All right, the next joint that you're going to grab is the wing joint and that's this one right here 
you'll see this. And you'll notice how I'm holding the wing joint. Yes, my hand is covering some of the, the key work, but in general, I'm, I'm grasping it from a part where there's not a lot of key work. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna twist it and put it into the smaller hole here. And then I'm gonna grab the long joint, which is this guy right here. And I'm gonna put the long joint inside this concave part of the wing joint. All right, and once you have the wing joint and the long joint fitted into the boot joint like this, you may have what I have, which is a body lock right here. So I'm just gonna snap that in place. You might have a body lock that's closer down here. It, it may not look the exact same as mine. It still does the same thing. It, it holds these two joints together. Now, the last joint you wanna get is the bell. The bell has one key right here, and hopefully you can see this. You're gonna put this, you're gonna hold this key down, and you're gonna put the bell on like this so that these two keys line up with each other. Then you're finally gonna put the vocal on the bassoon. You never wanna hold the vocal like this, okay? You always wanna put it in with the round part. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna twist it in there and you'll notice that the pip on the vocal lines up with the whisper keypad on the wing joint. The last part is an optional thing. You might have this, this is a hand crutch and if you have it, it probably does not look like this. It's probably black and not quite as curvy as mine. I have a hand handmade one and it's going to fit in down here and then that's gonna fit like this. And that way I can put my hand around the bassoon. The first step to making a bassoon embouchure is to make a whistling face. And even if you don't know how to whistle, just pretend. What the whistling face does is it brings your lips forward and it creates a nice round cushion for your reed to be supported by, kind of like the top of a drawstring bag. The second step to creating a bassoon embouchure is while you are making that whistling face, take your finger and roll your bottom lip just slightly over your bottom teeth, like this. You can think of the bottom lip as the primary support for the reed and the top lip is just simply covering the reed. The third and final step to creating a bassoon embouchure is to create an overbite. And that just means that you'll put your top lip slightly in front of your bottom lip as if you were looking at it from the side. The top lip should be somewhere around two thirds of the way up the reed. Depending on your jaw and your facial structure, an overbite for the bassoon embouchure might feel a little bit awkward and uncomfortable. And so that's why you wanna be using a mirror or you wanna have someone take a picture of you just to make sure that you are using the correct embouchure and everything's in the right spot. Just so that we're on the same page with how tonguing actually works on the bassoon, let's talk about where exactly on your tongue should be making contact with the reed. Take the tip of your reed and place it directly against the tip of your tongue. Now, move the reed slightly on top of your tongue so that the tip of the bottom blade of the reed is making contact slightly behind the tip of the tongue. As you can see, there's not very much surface area where the reed is making contact with the tongue, and that's very intentional. So we've talked about the placement of the tongue when it makes contact with the reed, but we haven't actually talked about the tongue motion when you're actually tonguing on the bassoon. A common mistake that beginners make is that they think that the tongue should be coming at the reed every single time that they want to articulate, but it's actually the opposite. Your tongue should start on the reed every time you want to play a note, and then it should come away in a downward motion and then return to the reed at the end of the note. The reason that you want the tongue to come away in a downward motion is because if your tongue comes straight back, 
when you're tonguing, that creates an obstruction in your oral cavity that your air has to come around. So when you come down, when your tongue comes down each time, that allows the air to pass through quickly on each tongue. Okay, I'm gonna show you kind of an up close version of where your fingers are gonna be on the bassoon. So this is the bottom of the bassoon, as you can see, there's the rest of the bassoon. And this is your right hand right now. And this is the front of the bassoon that's gonna be facing away from you. So this is kind of what it will look like. And you're going to place your fingers on this tone hole, on this tone hole, and then on this key right here. You might have a key right here, don't press it. It's this one right here. This is your home base of where your fingers are gonna be. And then your pinky is gonna kinda just hang out on this key right here, gently. And then if we take a look at the back of the bassoon where your thumb is hanging out, you are going to place your thumb over this key right here. This is called the B flat key. And a really common bad habit for students is to put their thumb right here. And you don't wanna do that because then you're not ready to move around. So even when you're not pressing this key down, you wanna keep your thumb in this kind of general area ready to go whenever you need it. And then if we're taking a look at our left hand, so this is the back of the bassoon. This is what's gonna be facing towards you, like this. And your left thumb is going to be on this key right here, called the whisper key. And that's gonna be your home base position because what you can do from here is you can move around to all these other keys with your thumb when you learn more fingerings. And if we look at the front of the bassoon, so again, this is facing away from you, this, you may have three tone holes right here, like me, or you may actually have a key right here that covers a tone hole and that makes it easier to reach. If you're on a student model short reach bassoon, um, you may have a key that you press down right here and it's, it does the same thing. So finger here, here, and here and your left pinky is going to be hanging out again kind of over the this area so it can go between these two keys and so th that's your home base position that doesn't necessarily mean that you're always pressing those keys down but it does mean that that's where your fingers are going to kind of revert to whenever you're not using them or when you're ready getting ready to play the next thing first note you're going to learn is F and it's by far the easiest note to play because all you have to press down is this whisper key in your left hand. So the next note we're going to learn is D. Press down the whisper key just like you did for F and then you're going to press down one and two in your left hand on the front of the bassoon. C is really easy. It's very similar to D, so you play the fingering for D, whisper key, one, two, and then you're gonna add this third finger, um, or you're going to cover the plateau key to play C, and C sounds like this. The next note you're gonna learn is a little bit more complicated than the others, but it's not too bad, so you're gonna add your right hand now, and so you're gonna play C, finger C like we just did, and then in your right thumb, you're gonna add the B flat key with your right thumb. And then on the front of the bassoon with your uh, index finger and middle finger, you're going to cover these two tone holes. So you, all in all, you've got whisper key, one, two, three in your left hand, and you've got B flat key with your thumb in your right hand, one, two, and that's your B flat. The final fingering that you're gonna learn is E flat, and it is a little bit more tricky. I saved it for the end just because it's a little bit more involved than the other notes that we learned, but you can definitely do it. So you're gonna play your whisper key with your left hand, left thumb. Then on the front of the bassoon, you're gonna do what's called a forked fingering, which means you're gonna play with your first finger and your third finger, but you're gonna leave your middle finger, your second finger, open and then you're going to use your left pinky to play this upper key right here the resonance key and that is your e flat and that sounds like this 
Now, if your E flat is really unstable, if it's kind of wobbly and it doesn't sound great, you can add some things in your right hand to make it sound better. So you could add your right thumb on the B flat key, and you could also add your second finger, the second tone hole in on the front of the bassoon in your right hand. All in all, that's gonna be whisper key, one, three, then you just have your second finger in your right hand, and you have your B flat key and your right thumb. And that is the full E flat fingering. And that sounds like this. I recommend using the short or the left hand only E flat fingering that I showed you to begin with, only because it's a little bit less complicated than the longer fingering that I just showed you. And it kind of blends in a little bit better with the notes around it. However, every bassoon is different, every reed is different, every player is different. You'll have to experiment for your setup, whether the short E flat or the long E flat with both hands is gonna work better for you on your bassoon. Congratulations, you've gotten to this point in the video where you have learned all of the basics of bassoon playing, everything that I would be teaching you in our very first bassoon lesson, and you have the information to get up and running on the bassoon. And if you didn't remember everything from today, there's a lot of information to take in. You can always go back and rewatch this video to remind yourself of what you need to do to play bassoon. So I want to introduce you to your very first song that you're going to play, which is Hot Cross Buns. You might be familiar with it. And this song requires three notes that you just learned. It requires D, C, and B flat. So you can think about it as D, C, B flat, D, C, B flat, B flat, B flat, B flat, B flat, C, 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 D, C, B flat. Okay, those are the three notes. And now you're gonna try them on the bassoon. So remember, in order to play these notes, you have to articulate on the bassoon. You have to tongue the notes so that your tongue is actually touching the reeds. Tongue, 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 okay? And your air is constantly going, your air is constantly traveling through the instrument. It's just your tongue is lightly interrupting. All right, let's, let's try it. Here's the full Hot Cross Buns song. <laughs> to do if you have it is take off your hand crutch make sure that you're screwing this back in place and just put it in your case and again your case may look completely different from mine that's totally fine just put it in the way that you pulled it out the next thing you'll want to do is take off the vocal and you'll want to make get any condensation out of the vocal so you'll cover this pip and then you will blow any condensation out of the vocal and put it in your case. Next thing you wanna do is pull off the bell. So you wanna do it the same way that you put it on. So you wanna twist it off this way. I'm just gonna set this right here. And then your bell is done. And then if you have a body lock like mine, you're going to pull that off. You're gonna hold the boot joint with your left hand while you twist off the long joint. And then you'll place the long joint in your case. The next thing you'll do is, again, holding the boot joint, you'll wanna take the wing joint, twist it off, similar to how you put it in. And for now, I'm gonna set my boot joint in my case. I'll come back to it. But I wanna swab my wing joint. So what I'm gonna do is I, I just turned it upside down and I'm gonna drop the swab weight through here and maybe you have a chain swab. Your swab may not look exactly like mine, but as long as it is a bassoon swab, it should be fine. And you're gonna pull it all the way through. Make sure you don't have any knots in the swab. And then I'm gonna just, for now, I'm just gonna set this in my case gently. I'm not ready to put it all the way in yet. Then I'm gonna swab out the boot joint. 
Now the boot joint is, can be a little bit tricky to swab out. So make sure that, again, you have a bassoon swab. Maybe you have a bassoon boot joint swab. You wanna take the weighted end and put it through the larger hole of the boot joint. And then you're gonna, going to kind of push the, the swab into the, that part of the boot joint. And now I'm going to try and bring the weight around the bottom of the, the boot joint. So that, you'll see, it comes out the other side. All right, because we have kind of a U-bend in the bottom of the boot joint. And then I'm just gonna make sure that there's no additional condensation right on the inside there. And then I'm going to place it in my bassoon case. Now, one thing you should know, your bassoon may have come with this or it may not have, is between your wing joint and your long joint, you should have some type of cloth right there. I have just kind of a regular cleaning cloth and usually you'll be able to put it in so that the two joints can sit together and that way they don't rub against each other when they're sitting in the case. So that is how you disassemble a bassoon and you want to make sure that every single time, every single time that you are done playing the bassoon that you do a complete swab of both the boot joint and the wing joint and then it'll be ready to store away. I am so excited for you to continue on your bassoon journey and I'm really proud of you for getting through this first lesson and taking in all this information and trying to incorporate it yourself. From here on out, I really recommend that you be very patient with yourself. You review this video, maybe check out some of my other videos on this channel and really just take time to learn these fundamentals. It will take time to become comfortable with everything. It's gonna feel weird at first. It will become comfortable over time. Now, if you remember from the beginning of this video, I mentioned that I have a special gift for you. So because you just got through your very first lesson and you're starting bassoon, and I'm so proud of you for, for getting this far, I wanna give you a really special gift. If you've gotten to this point and this video was helpful for you, then I have the perfect thing to continue going off from here. I have created a course called Bassoon Jumpstart. It is my flagship online comprehensive course for beginners, and it is meant to get you up and running on the bassoon. Everything that we learned in this lesson is there in the course, plus lots more information. So it, you literally learn everything you need to know to get up and running on the bassoon. There are exercises and music. I have a video on how to read bass clef if maybe you've switched from another instrument and aren't quite comfortable with bass clef. The material in the course is meant to cover most of the things that you would learn in your first year of playing the bassoon. So there's a lot of material there and it starts right from day one. So where you're at right now is perfect. I designed the course exactly for you. And in the course, there's lots of videos of me talking to you, demonstrating things on the bassoon. I show you how to play certain notes. And I really developed this course exactly how I teach private lessons. If you were and I were to continue on in lessons week after week, these are the topics that we'd be covering and this is how I would be teaching them to you. So I really recommend that if you're not sure where to go from here on out with your playing, to check out that course. The gift that I wanna give you is a 50% discount to Bassoon Jumpstart. Normally this course is priced at $147, which gives you lifetime access to the course, including all future updates and improvements that I make to it. But with the code that I'm gonna send you in an email below when you sign up, you get 50% off, it comes out to about $74. And that is an absolute steal for the value of the course, because like I said, it gets you through about a year of playing the bassoon for about what it takes to take a couple private lessons. So it's really well worth the value. I think that if you sign up for it, you are really going to get um, your money's worth out of it. Um, and I'm really excited to be able to share, make it a little bit more accessible to you. If this video was helpful for you, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you can see other videos that I make that might help you out with your bassoon playing. And let me know down in the comments what things are still 
confusing to you or that you feel like you still need help with. I'd love to know what things you're still wanting to work on and still needing help with. Uh -huh.